this little record button. Well, today's presentation, um, or today's webinar loss, you know, for loss prevention is check it before you wreck it. I'm going to start off with a uh, run a little poll. I don't know why my mouse disappears every time <laughs> when I go into presentation mode. Let's go ahead and start a, a quick poll. <clears throat> ask a few questions in this poll regarding what you do in your organization for audits and inspections. Does your organization conduct regular safety audits or inspections? Are you guys able to see that poll? Did it come up? Okay, beautiful. Just want to make sure I didn't see a lot of activity coming in yet. So the second question, how often do you do those inspections? And the third, what kind of follow-up mechanism do you have to make sure that audit, audit findings are corrected? All right, we'll let that go for just a just a oh, 30 seconds more or something like that. Let people let people answer that poll and then we'll summarize it. <clears throat> I kind of like to I kind of like to do these polls and get us a, an idea of where people stand um, and what they're currently doing. All right, that gave everybody a minute so Go ahead and end that poll. Looks like 100% of those that responded are doing some sort of inspections. Some are doing daily. It looks like the majority are doing a monthly inspection. A few are doing annually. And one was, one was willing to admit when we get around to it. So that's good. What kind of uh, follow-up mechanism? The vast majority use some sort of a work order. Some are using a spreadsheet. Some rely on, I won't forget to do that. So. That's great. Oh, I could have clicked that button and shared the shared the results. All right. So I'm going to close that out and we'll it will dive back into this. So we'll start off with a question. What is the definition of insanity? Um, now, this this quote has been attributed to Albert Einstein. It's been attributed to multiple people. I don't know who it act, who actually said it, but I think it's a pretty good quote. Uh, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. We've all heard that. Um, but I ask you a question, what is it that's driving us insane all of the time? What is it drive, uh, what is driving us insane in loss prevention? And really it's, it's accidents. We see, uh, we see, each of us in loss prevention get a report, and Jeff does as well, gets a report every day of all the new claims that come in. And sometimes we just kind of smack ourselves in the forehead and say, what? We did that again? How do we how do we not learn from our, our mistakes? And really, that's um, that's what kind of drives us crazy. Each year, we see in the neighborhood of 397 auto accidents. Why am I that? Why am I that dead on 397? Because it has averaged 397. It's been one on either side of that for years. <laughs> We're about five years into being being within five or six of 397 auto claims. We have tons of backing accidents. We have falls from ladders. We have strains from lifting. We have uh, slips, trips, and falls. Brent talked about those. We have a lot of bloodborne pathogen exposures. We have law enforcement officers getting injured in in the line of duty um, in various different ways, and we see we see these accidents happen over and over and over again. And, uh, and sometimes it's a, it's a bit frustrating. It's more than frustrating to the people that have, that get injured in an accident like this or have an auto accident or something like that. How do we go about preventing these same accidents? How do we address these issues so they don't happen over and over again? Well, there's a lot that goes into prevention. Um, and here, here are three things, and there's, there's more that goes into, an, into a safety and risk management program than what I'm going to show here, but these are important. Um, to have an active safety committee, to perform regular incident investigations, and what we're gonna talk about today, to do facility inspections and audits to see how we're doing, to check our systems. So uh, let's go, let's talk uh, just briefly about accidents. Accidents are caused. What causes an accident? Well, accidents are caused by conditions and, and actions. So conditions or unsafe 
um, situations like a damaged ladder. It's got a broken rung. And if you climb on that ladder, you could, you could cause the rung to fall through and you could fall and hurt yourself. Unsafe actions are done by people. I take a ladder and if I climb on a step ladder and if I climb on those top two steps, that's an unsafe act. Now, am I going to get, get away with it? I might. I might get away from it, get away with it multiple times, but it's not necessarily, uh, but it's, it's not something that's always going to happen. An unsafe condition or an unsafe act is an accident waiting to happen. And if we don't handle those, we could, uh, we're going to have those accidents and they're going to repeat over and over again. So if we, un if we address those unsafe conditions and actions, we prevent future accidents. Will it prevent every accident? No, because we can't foresee every potential that's out there. But if we're not looking, we're not going to identify those and we're going to have, we're going to have those repeat accidents. So our goal in here is to address unsafe and con conditions and actions by first identifying them and then by fixing them. If we just allow these unsafe conditions and acts to go on and on, we will have accidents and, uh, and those can potentially be life threatening. Okay, so today, whoops, we want to talk about audits and inspections and you're like, well, what's the diff? What's the difference between an audit and an inspection? And that's really the, that's really the crux of what we'll talk about today because they are different. And uh, they're both important parts of our safety program. And sometimes we we loop, we kind of lump these all together in in one area. But I wanted to I wanted to parse this out a bit so you could so you can um, think about this um, how these different um, programs can benefit your safety or risk management program. So an inspection to start with. This is a regular documented check of worst workplace conditions. So for example, we have a forklift operator. Now this is an OSHA requirement. So this is, this is something that we don't even have to make a decision. We're legally obligated to do this. If you have a forklift, that forklift operator, it needs to complete a pre-shift inspection of the forklift. Um, and uh, what's, the, uh, what's the purpose of that? Well, it's to ensure safe conditions exist um, in the equipment. So for the forklift, it's, it's the equipment, but it could be tools, work environment, and our emergency preparations. Who performs an inspection? Well, these are the workers working in that area. So I may have a startup checklist, this next one, uh, like a forklift pre-shift pre inspection. I may, if I'm a CDL operator, I'm driving a, a snowplow or I'm driving a, a heavy truck or a bus, I'm legally obligated to do a pre-trip inspection of that. And I've got a, I've got a video um, on our YouTube channel if you wanna take a look at that as well. But these are the type of inspections. Most of our fire departments will do a shift inspection. So when they start up, they go out and they check the apparatus ensure that the, the vehicles are all in running condition, that they're, they're set up the way they're supposed to. They, even, they may even start up the chainsaws and start up the cutoff saws to ensure that they're ready to go in the event that they have to be used um, in a hurry. Then we also have things like regular departmental checks where on a, on a regular basis, what that, what that regularity is, is kind of up to you. We recommend at least once a month, a department will go out and take a look at their conditions and document those conditions. So over the years, we've distributed this form and this is one that, uh, that um, I created in a, in a, with a former employer, put this together as, as one that we would use um, on a monthly basis to check each department. We would hand this out to every department and, and the departmental supervisor or manager had a responsibility to have it completed by the end of the month. Um, we build it into the process um, that, they, that they needed to do that. Now, um, when we talk about inspections, they could either be one that's, that is like this, here's a checklist, or it could be something that's built into 
an everyday thing. Your job, if you're a <clears throat> If you're a welder and you're working out in the shop is to ensure that we don't have combustible materials um, around the, the fire extinguisher is in place and it's charged and, and ready to work and et cetera, et cetera. Those are those types of checks. This is more of a full departmental check that we're talking about here. And it's a checklist. Um, you don't have to have checklist, but it really helps to have something to look for. This is beneficial because we can identify the hazards that are in our workplace and take action. Um, the one thing that, or the one wonderful side benefit that we have from this is people get trained by doing these audits. My recommendation is always to have a different person do this audit every month or this inspection. Sorry, I'm already crossing my words. This inspection every month. Why do I have a different person do it? Well, it's a different set of eyes. They're going to see things in a different way and it trains everybody in the department on what to look for. Well, so how does that help? Well, in a month from now, when it's not this employee's uh, time to do the inspection, they're walking through the department and they see somebody put that garbage can back in front of the fire extinguisher. I know from last month when I did the safety audit, that garbage can is not supposed to be there. The hope is that they will recognize that's an issue and they'll correct it on their own. This is a way that we build our safety culture in letting everybody know that they own safety in their, in their work area. And it's not somebody else's responsibility. It's all of our responsibility. And if we all take action and we eliminate those, those hazards, we eliminate those unsafe acts, um, then, we can, then we can have a safe workplace. Okay. It's essential that we have a follow-up procedure on here. And, and in that poll, you, you guys did a great job of saying, hey, we do work orders. Hey, we, do, we have a spreadsheet that we check on this stuff. Why is it important to write this stuff down? And the answer to that question is because then it happened, then it gets corrected. If we don't write it down, it's a, it's a crapshoot, whether, whether it'll actually be remembered or whether it will be addressed. And so in every one of the forms that, that we send out and make available to you, we put this um, supervisor check off or buy off. So the supervisor owns this. It doesn't matter who does the audit, but when they identify something that doesn't conform, to what our expectations are, the supervisor needs to own up to that and say, okay, we were putting something in place to fix it, replace the tool, um, clean up the mess that happened, um, maybe change a procedure, something like that, but they own off. So you can look at that up the top. That's the section in gray that will help that, help that out. Documentation is so key in everything that we do in, in risk management. If we want it to get done, we better write it down. Okay, and there's, the, there's that section that I was talking about, a supervisor review. I reviewed this report and I see that we have a couple of deficiencies there. Um, we've, already, we've already completed one, but the other, I've got to get some money to be able to buy a new tool or I've got to get it, it's going to take a little bit of time, but it's on my list and I, and I um, acknowledge that I'm going to complete that. And then we do our follow-up. We close that loop to ensure that that happens. So on these inspections, there are those daily checks. So pre-shift type startup um, inspections, uh, a monthly requirement like I've talked, let's do each department once a month. Um, I think these are effective safety metrics. Did every department complete their safety, safety inspection this month, departmental inspection? And do we track those deficiencies? So when those, when those um, monthly inspections are turned in, let's take those and track those. Now you may already have a work order system, a way to track those, but if you don't, let's put it on a spreadsheet or let's put it on a list. Um, so then as our safety committee meets, we can, we can say, hey, we had 15 deficiencies um, identified in the past month in our inspections and all but one have been taken care of. And then we laser in and we, and we watch that one to make sure it gets done. Okay. And folks, just a reminder, if you have questions on this or comments, type those into the chat box. So, so we've got those when we, when we get to the, to the Q&A here in a couple of minutes. Audits. Audits may look very similar to an inspection, but they're a bit different. Audits 
um, our regular documented check of workplace conditions. And they're done to ensure the safe, uh, that our safety programs are effective. So it's just a little bit different than an inspection. These are generally performed by somebody that's not the worker in the area. Generally, it's management. And so what are these? This is a check. This is a check to make sure that things are going as we plan. We can, we can build great policies. We can have safety rules. We can have all of those things. But the reality on the ground may be very different from what, uh, from, uh, from what we think it ought to be. And so this is a check for that. So let's talk about a few examples in, on this. Some of these are, are management audits. We call it management by walking around. If everybody that works at that organization sees the boss out walking around asking about safety items, what does that, where does that place safety in importance? It lets everybody know that it's important to the that safety is important to the boss and it will be important to them. So walking around asking about safety, looking at things and fixing things. How do you how do you build buy in from from the team? Well, do stuff, fix things, um, take that problem. And sometimes it's it's good to take one really high profile thing that's everybody that's bugged everybody for a long time and just fix it and then play that up and say, hey, guys, we're going to work together. What else you got? Let's let's make our workplace safer. Let's make it a better place. Focused audits, um, trust, trust loss prevention. We go out and do what we call a SAR, a safety action report. Um, and we walk through and we look with a very detailed eye at a lot of things and we'll send you, a, send you an audit. Additionally, you could do an audit that's really topical. Go out and take and you know do an HR audit and make sure that your labor law postings are all up to date. Do a fire safety audit or safety behaviors. So we talk about unsafe acts. Sometimes we focus a lot on conditions, but sometimes we ought to look at how are people doing the jobs. Um, let's look at what their actions are doing. If they're doing it right, let's let's build them up and say, "Good job. We appreciate you uh, um, working safely, having all your PPE on, and those types of things." And focus on the positive as much as the negative. Uh, emergency response, lockout, tagout, all of those things can be important uh, a, important audits to do on a regular basis. And you might consider putting these on a calendar um, that once a month we're going to do a management audit. And we're going to look at these 12 different things through the year. Sometimes we want to go out after an incident or a near miss and do a follow up and do an audit on our uh, audit on our processes and on what's really happening on the ground to see what's uh, to see what's going on. And sometimes we can do an audit that involves worker interviews and we can ask some questions about that. What's your perception of the safety in the workplace? Is there anything that makes you nervous about your job? Do you feel trained, adequately trained to do the type of tasks that you have here? Do you have the tools that you need? Simple questions like that can really open and open up um, a line of communication and really enlighten us on what some of the challenges may be and also what some of the frustrations and, and uh, you know, what's going on in the workplace that can make it difficult for employees. All right, so the audit process, build it into our process. So it's something, you know, put it on a calendar. So once a month, management goes out and does this. Um, we take various different parts of our, of our operations and we audit those things. We can use a checklist or we can just do a direct observation, walk out and look at what's going on and take action from there. Um, once again, we should have a follow-up procedure on this. So if there's if there's a um, deficiency that we find, let's track it and follow that to completion. Now, these might take a little bit longer because it might be we don't have a, a policy on lockout tagout. So we need to write a policy, adopt the policy, train all the employees, buy the equipment and all of those things. Um, and so it may take a little bit longer for results from an audit process but it's, it's no less important than the daily inspections. Once again, documentation is so important to ensure that this happens. Okay, just to wrap up, um, we can't prevent recurring accidents unless we're out there actively identifying and fixing unsafe, hazard, unsafe conditions and unsafe acts. 
Um, these proactive audits are going to help us. We're not going to be reactionary, not going to be reacting to, hey, we had an accident in this area and now we got to hurry and, and try to fix stuff. If we're proactively walking through the area, one, we're building our, our safety culture. We're building a rapport with all of the staff and, uh, and able to communicate with them. And when, and when staff see that you're really serious about this, they're going to come forward with their concerns. They're going to come forward with their suggestions, the things that will help make your work areas better. Who knows how to do the job best? Well, it's generally the people that are doing that job. They know what hurts. They know what makes it difficult um, to do that job. And they're going to share those things if we make it um, if we make it a part of, uh, if we make sure that they understand that we care about this. All right, um, so check it before you wreck it. So we do have a, we've got a question here and folks go ahead and type your, your questions or comments in there. Um, Neil asks, was there a sample of an audit report? Yes, and I'm going to send out, um, we have two samples, one's for an office environment, one's for a shop environment, but I'm in the process of, of building several others for different work environments. And I will send those out to everybody, everybody who signed up for this webinar today. And, uh, and then you can take those from there. Um, these are generally in a, in a Microsoft Excel form. Um, so you can go in and change those and change those audits to match what your, uh, what your work environment looks like. If you, if you don't have an eyewash station, take the eyewash station off. If you, uh, if you have something that's not on our sample form, add it. Um, if you have something that's gonna, the, that you think works a heck of a lot better than what I've got there, send it to me. <laughs> and, I'd love to, and I'd love to collaborate on that. And if you have some things in place that you're willing to, sh willing to share, um, you know, I would love to see those as well. I think we can work together as a, as a group, uh, as trust members, and become better and better as an organization uh, by, sharing those, by sharing that information. So are there any other questions? Doug and Brent, Jeff's on still here too as well. Any, anything you, uh, anything I missed, anything we ought to add? Well, I would add that don't get rid of the section on the eyewash station if you should have an eyewash station. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is true, good point, Doug. Um, <laughs> let's see, oh, okay, I, I did have a point out. Check your wall stuff. <laughs> My picture fell off the wall. <laughs> oh, wow. Did you, you guys weren't paying attention, were you? The folks in Riverton were, though. <laughs> Let's see. I, I um, saw it. I was looking to see if my monitor was shaking like we're having an earthquake. <laughs> it actually, that picture came down in the earthquake. <laughs> And I put it up today because it was sitting down there and, and apparently the, the stickum that's on it is not very good. <laughs> All right. Other questions? Okay, I think that's it. Just for, just for a final word on this. We need to be actively involved in our safety and risk management programs. If we're not out looking for these things, um, they're gonna find us. And, uh, and so it's a pretty simple thing. Book some time each month, book some time each week to look for safety, talk about safety so it becomes an organizational value. And, uh, and then we're, we're able to prevent instead of just be reactionary. Okay, folks, thanks so much for all of your efforts out there. You're doing, you're doing great. Um, go out and have a safe day. <laughs>